Joining us now, David Bonson, managing partner of the Bonson Group. Uh, David, I want to talk to you about the working class vote, because I think it might be the decisive thing in this election. Kamala Harris trying to sort of close the deal on that. Listen to what she said. We just talked about the industrial work that you're doing, whether it's about a bridge, whether it's about what we're doing to invest in technology and the future industries. He's not working for or concerned about working people middle class people. And then when he's talking to his buddy, he, he jokes about, yeah, if they're striking, you should fire him. Has the working class vote been her biggest failure in this campaign cycle? It's up there. You could argue just uh, the male vote in general has been a big problem for her. I think she that there's a number of demographic problems. The working class votes become a problem for the Democrat Party. Mm. And that's a, a huge thing. As often as I am critical of President Trump, one thing he's clearly done is bring working class voters back into the Republican fold. The issue is she has nothing to say to them but platitudes like that. So saying, I want to invest in grid, I would love for one of these guys to say, what, what's the grid? Just explain it. They're probably thinking it. Oh, I'm sure they what are. are you talking about? But can you even imagine what her word salad answer would be if we were asking her for any granularity? That's and so point. I don't think she has a message for him. And I think a lot of it is the cultural message of the far left is such a turnoff to typical working class voters. Mm. They don't care about all these woke, DEI, ESG, radical green. And by the way, some of those things work against them. Right. Mm. You remind me of a piece in the New York Times this morning. I don't know if you guys saw it about how this is parallel to the 1960s. 60s when the Democrats think that it's all the woke stuff and then the Republicans went on to win four of the next five elections because it's not about the woke stuff. It's about the girl in Ohio who can't pay her groceries. Yeah. So you're sort of echoing that comment. I want to talk about how people feel on the ground. Consumer confidence jumping some of the highest levels we jumping by the most that we haven't seen in about three years. I know sometimes you poo-poo it, but this is now sort of the future expectations, how people feel about the economy six months out is rising. Is that a Trump thing or is this an economy that feels better? Consumer confidence is never forward looking. People think they're answering based okay. on how they feel in six months, but they are as human nature can only answer on how they felt about the last six months. What happened in the last six months? Jobs are still good. Wages have grown and uh, the interest rates started coming down. But here's a little key about American consumers. I've studied this for 25 years. They're always confident if there's room on their credit card, if they still have a job. Americans don't stop spending money. It's a Keynesian notion that we care about consumer confidence because Keynesians need there to be a central planner in the economy. And if you can manipulate consumer demand, that le lends itself to some sort of central planning, government control of the economy. Production focused people, supply siders like me, don't believe the government can produce it. They need to get out of the way. And that's the real issue why consumer confidence is less important. I know here human beings but, do not need to be incentivized uh, to spend money. Jackie brings this point up, and I, I kind of agree with you. I think people can be excited about the future. I, like, I think you can have animal spirits that affect the way you feel today, but you're thinking about the way things might change. I don't see why that can't show up in consumer confidence. I mean, it can or it can't. I don't really want to debate that. I'd like to talk about President Trump talking about the consumer, the average American person this morning at Mar-a-Lago. He said that yeah. one third of people um, basically are broke self-professed. Two-thirds of people are living paycheck to paycheck and struggling to get by. His messaging a little bit earlier when he took that time, he's trying to front run Harris in her closing remarks tonight, was to really speak to the issues that matter to Americans. And I think he did a great job doing that. As part of what he's planning for his transition is to have Howard Lutnick and a lot of Wall Street people look at this and advise him from, with their Wall Street perspective. Lutnick's been out there and been very outspoken, but you've got people behind the scenes who are also saying, we're on board, we're going to help you, we're going to advise. We may not want to be Elon Musk or Howard Lutnick and be so public about it, yeah. but we are there to support you. That's what's going to fix the guy in this country who's broke. All right. Well, let me let me take a view on this. It's a little more nuanced. I think you're exactly right that if he has the right people, I've been saying this for months to clients. Personnel is policy. First term, Mnuchin did a great job as Treasury Secretary. I love dearly my friend Larry Kudlow. There were great people there. Mm. Um, I think that this time we just need to make sure that it's all these good people that are sensible and they can execute. They have to be able to get stuff done, not just good ideas, but be able to execute. Um, Lutnick is a pro. He knows what he's doing. Obviously, Musk is a genius. The, the key is going to be discipline to really stick to that because uh, there's a lot of people that are going to be jockeying for his time and attention. Mm. I think you're right about the Wall Street side that uh, anyone who says they don't want Treasury, this includes Jamie Dimon, they take it in a second. Nobody turns that job down. Mm. 
Uh, I'm very curious if Trump does win next week, the two to three weeks thereafter are going to tell me a lot about the next four years. Who's going to get some of those key appointments? Well, in his pitch is he learned something on that. Having been in D.C., having been in that world, he gets it better and he feels like he can find the right people. But as you say, we shall see because you got to make those appointments. David, great stuff. Always good to see you. Thanks for being with us.